What's going on guys, I'm Wikidom and today we're going to be talking all things OBS. It's one of the most popular questions on my channel is what are your OBS settings? So I thought I'd do a video for all of you. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do is go down to your settings tab down here on the right bottom corner. So click on that and it opens up the settings menu. With the general page, you can leave everything as it is. Uh, it's set up pretty perfectly uh, for OBS. The only thing I would suggest is change the language that you're going for and also change to the dark theme. It's a lot easier, a lot better to see when it's in the dark theme, especially when you've got bright lights. You don't want bright lights and a bright OBS shining in your face if you're streaming or recording. So click on that dark theme. So in this stream tab is basically one of your main command centers for streaming. Uh, in this tab, you will be able to click which service you're going for, which is basically where you're going to be live streaming. So if you're on Twitch, you click obviously Twitch and then YouTube, it has a load of other things. So you've got Mixer and you've also got Periscope and uh, Switchboard. Lots of popular streaming uh, websites are on here. So definitely uh, pick the right one. And then when you've done that, click the server. Normally stick with auto because it will switch you depending on what ones are best for your ping at the moment. Uh, if you want to, you can pick the area specified. So if you are you know you're really close to the London UK server, go to that one or same with any of these other ones. If you know that you're really close, go with that one because it would generally be the best. But I tend to stick with automatic just in case uh, the London one crashes. I then get automatically switched down to Paris and there's not really much of an issue and then once you've done these, all this lot, what you need to do is go to your YouTube, go to your Twitch and find where your key is. This is a stream key. This is the most important thing and you need to know exactly where this is. You need to copy it and paste it in here. This is what allows your computer to talk to the servers and post your content live to the streaming service that you're with. So make sure you put that streamer key in there. So in the output tab, you get a load of different options for streaming, recording, audio and replay buffer. And we're going to ignore audio and replay buffer because I don't really use them myself. Uh, and the way they're set up normally is absolutely perfect. So you don't really need to touch it. But the first thing you need to do is go to output mode and click on advanced. And this basically gives you all of the options that you're going to need. Uh, for audio track, it, by default, it'll be set on one. You can tinker with this if you want, uh, but I recommend for streaming, just keep it on one. It's a lot easier, a lot simpler, and you can keep an eye on basically all your devices will be on one anyway when you automatically load them up by default. So make sure that's ticked. Uh, for encoder, I tend to, to use the X264 encoder. I'm not a big fan of the NVIDIA encoder. It's by far the most reliable one that I've used. Uh, so definitely stick with the X264. This is normally default, so stick with that one. The next thing you need to do is go to rescale output. Now, if you're on a low internet speed, so I'm talking below 3000, uh, you need to check this and lower it to 720p. Uh, if you're above 3000 bit rate, you can leave that as 1080p uh, and you will be absolutely fine to, uh, fine to go. Uh, and then moving down to the rate control. So this is a bit rate control. I use a uh, custom bit rate. Uh, you can use these other uh, wild ones, but I find uh, CBR is by far the best and it's the most reliable as well. Uh, and then the most important thing is the bit rate. You need to find out where your internet speed is by going uh, to speed test, testing your internet speed and pop it in here. Make sure you're not on megabytes and you're on kilobytes and then pop whatever it reads on there. I would normally suggest take 500 off that. So you've room for gaming and then pop the rest of it into here so you've got enough room for streaming and gaming at the same time so otherwise your internet won't crash click on use custom buffer size it's really important guys to click on use custom buffer size this just basically ensures that the buffering is the exact same as the bitrate that you set in that setting off so just make sure this is the exact same here for keyframe intervals uh you need to click on two cp usage uh, make sure you're on very fast profile keep as none and tune keep as none and for x264 options just leave that one blank for the time being and then once you've done all that click apply okay when you've done all that if you're looking to be recording click onto the recording tab uh, just make sure that the type is on standard. Here you can click the dictionary or where you want uh, your videos to be recorded to. So I've got mine set up in my recording and streaming drive. Then go down and make sure your recording format is MP4. When it comes to editing on Photoshop, MP4 is by far the most reliable. You can do .mov, but sometimes they won't load into Premiere Pro or your chosen editing software. It won't really work properly. Now, because we're all just getting started, I normally just leave on uh, audio track on one. You can do two and three, but sometimes you do get errors. 
Uh, encoder, keep that the same. Do not switch it to the NVIDIA. Keep it as X264. Do not rescale the output for recording because you're not really streaming and you want the best quality possible. Make sure that's on 1080p. With a bitrate control, which is a bit down on the bottom here, but make sure you're on CBR again. And this time you can pop it up to 10,000. If you have a really, really high spec computer, you can pop that to 50,000, which would be the same as NVIDIA Shadow Play. You don't need you to use custom buffer size. Leave keyframe interval as zero, or you can pop it to two. I prefer two. Make sure you are also on very fast once again, the exact same as streaming, and then null at tune, and then leave the option at the bottom blank. Click apply and you are all good to move on. The next tab is audio. This basically shows you what all of your audio settings are. Uh, so for sample rate, you wanna stick it to the most, uh, the highest one, which is 48 kilohertz. If you have a really good uh, uh, mic, stick with the 400 kilohertz. If you're using something like iPhone headphones, uh, go for 4412 if you're using your webcam 4412. Uh, this just basically 48 just gives you more audio, more dynamic sound. Uh, and then here you can just fiddle about with your push to talks uh, if you want to. I normally just leave everything as default and then just disable uh, the ones that I'm not using. But leave everything here in default and it will run a lot smoother. And then move on to the video tab. So in this video tab is basically showing you what your screen is going to be capturing and what you're going to be recording and outputting at. Now, for most people, if you've got a 1080 screen, make sure you've got a 1080p uh, resolution on here. To check it, all you need to do is right click on your desktop and do display settings. Now, this will for me come up as a 2K resolution, uh, but I have set it in OBS to a 1080 because I find it a lot more reliable, especially when I've got three monitors going. My NVIDIA card can't really keep up with everything going on at the same time. So just go with whatever your display is saying. If you have more than two monitors, tone it down a little bit to 1080p. Uh, if you haven't got the best graphics card, if not, then you can leave it as the same there. Uh, for output resolution is what you want your main output to be. So I want my main output output to match the input. So you always want to try and keep these two matching. For downscale filter, put 32 samples. You can put other ones. If you've got a slower computer, do the 16 samples. But for most people, 32 will work perfectly. For common FPS values, this is what you can change so you can I have a stream at 30 fps 60 fps and all the other fps it won't let me click on because i'm recording at the moment uh but if you've got a slower internet stick with the 30 fps uh if you've got a slightly faster internet so above 5000 go with 60 fps but try it out and see if you're going to be good at 60 fps 720 or 60 fps 180 to do a private stream to yourself so you can see if you're going to get any buffering because everyone is different, especially with the computer and their computer specs and their internet speed. So just test out which one's best for you. Now in hotkeys, it basically just allows you to set up hotkeys. So if you're streaming, it makes it easier than having to tab out your screen to OBS. This just allows you to click on the simple button that you choose that won't interfere with your game and quickly change over to what you need to go to. So once you've done all of that, click apply once again and then go into advanced. And this is basically the slightly more advanced parts of OBS. Now, if you're just starting up, just stick with the main ones I've shown you before. But if you've been on OBS for quite a while, go to your advanced. The most questions I get asked about is the general uh, process priority. So this is uh, what priority OBS has in your app uh, to your processor. Now, I normally put it above normal uh, just so that I make sure I don't get any frame drops when I'm streaming recording and just to make sure I'm trying to get that best output on. And also, if you put it on high, it can interfere with the game. Uh, that you're playing but above normal won't interfere with your game and it will set both to above normal and you'll be using your full cpu power uh, with video uh, set it to the direct direct 3d 11 uh, this will be set as default to whatever your graphics card is so it'll pick up whatever your graphics card is and then just have a quick look at some of the settings here so I have a stream delay of 10 seconds. You can change the stream, de uh, stream delay to 20 seconds or whatever you want it to be, but I haven't actually got it enabled at the moment. What I was talking about was the automatic reconnect. So if you disconnect but for any reason, your internet suddenly cuts out and then comes back on. I've got a 10 second delay on that so for a reconnect, just to make sure I know everything's going fine. Uh, and then the network, I just leave it, leave it as default. It's a lot easier. Uh, and then when you've done all that, just click apply and OK. And that should get you going nice and easy, set, full setting set up for you. Thank you all very much for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, do not forget to subscribe. But until next time, guys, I have been Wiggy Dom. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you later. Peace.